Hi everyone, it's Microwave Sam. In these series of videos, I'll teach you how to use HTML, CSS, some JavaScript and jQuery in combination of Bootstrap to make a nice personal website for yourself. We'll go through every step of the way like I've been doing in past tutorials. You can see some example websites built with Bootstrap at builtwithbootstrap.com. I'll leave a link in the description. If you don't know what Bootstrap is, simply put, it is an HTML, CSS, JavaScript framework that you can use as a basis for creating appealing looking websites or web applications. Bootstrap makes the whole process of creating a website much cleaner, easier, and faster than just relying only on CSS and JavaScript for the appearance of your site. And finally, anyone can easily learn Bootstrap. First thing that we'll do is download all the files that we need. We need a text editor, I recommend Sublime Text. And secondly, we need the bootstrap files so we can use the bootstrap framework. First thing that you want to do is you want to go to your internet browser, click on your internet browser, and then go to sublimetext.com, which I'll leave a link in the description. Like I said before, Sublime Text is a very good text editor that I'd recommend because it's just easy to use. After going to download, you can see Sublime Text 3 is a current beta version of Sublime Text, but it contains many improvements over Sublime Text 2, so I'd recommend to use Sublime Text 3. Just click on the underlined Sublime Text 3. Now you can see that there are five available downloads for Sublime Text. The downloads are for OS X, Windows, or Ubuntu. The darkened circle will determine which OS version of Sublime Text 3 you should download. I have a darkened circle for Windows 64-bit, so I'll click on Windows 64-bit, and I'll save this executable file on my desktop. After downloading the small file, you can click on the executable to run the installation. The setup is very simple. A prompt will come up for the setup. You can just click Next and leave everything default. There, not, um, there isn't anything to change. Just click next on each of these um, and install. After installing Sublime Text, which will be very quick, you can just finish and we'll move on getting the Bootstrap files. Now Bootstrap is basically downloaded as a zip file and you can get it at getbootstrap.com which I'll also leave a link in the description. On the front of the page, you can just click download Bootstrap. Now once you get to this page, you can just click download Bootstrap again, which is on the left side. Like I said, Bootstrap will be in a zip file, so you'll need an extracting program to extract the zip file. There are many programs to use. I use WinRAR, but a lot of people like to use 7-zip or WinZip, and that's up to preference. If you go to your desktop or whatever folder you saved the zip file, you can just right click and extract Bootstrap. I'll just right click and extract here and then bootstrap will be inside a folder right on the desktop. So we'll create a new folder and this is a folder that we'll be basically working on for our personal website. I'll just name my folder bootstrap space project and now inside bootstrap project we need to organize some folders inside this directory to just have a organized simple layout of how we're going to set up our website. So there are some folders that you'll need in Bootstrap Project. I'll create a folder for CSS. CSS is basically, if you don't know what it is, it's called a cascading style sheet and it's used for visual and oral layouts. So we'll have a folder for all of our CSS files, we'll have a folder for our fonts, and we'll have a folder for our JS. And JS stands for JavaScript. JavaScript is just basically an object-oriented computer programming language used to create interactive effects within websites, mainly for animations. Inside Bootstrap 3.1.1, we'll copy and paste bootstrap.css and bootstrap.min.css. These are the two files that are needed to connect with our HTML files so that uh, we can use Bootstrap. 
So if you copy and paste it in our own CSS folder, it should be good. Secondly, we will need the two files from the JS bootstrap folder. We'll copy bootstrap.js and bootstrap.min.js and paste it into our own JS folder. If I didn't say before, we'll also need an image folder and a doc folder for organization reasons. Now, Bootstrap also has a fonts folder with some glyphicons, some icons, but we won't really need those. The second step is preliminary setup. First thing you want to do after you set up the layout of your folder, you search for Sublime Text. We'll be opening Sublime Text 3 and starting off with our simple HTML files, which is basically the files that you'll kind of see the content on uh, your website. So I'll just close out these files that I already had opened up and we'll change the layout back to single view. On Sublime, there's a useful feature to kind of change the layout, have multiple files open at once. I'll zoom in and we'll save this empty file, save as. We'll save it as our index.html file, which we'll save as on the root of our bootstrap project folder. We won't save it in any of these folders that we just created. We'll just save it on bootstrap project folder. And you can save it. Now we'll start off by writing caret, exclamation point, doc type, HTML to declare that this is our HTML file and we'll have beginning HTML tag and an ending HTML tag which is created with caret HTML caret and then the ending tag is created with caret slash HTML caret we'll create some head versions so a head section which is basically a section for kind of declaring some of the links and relationships and we'll create some title beginning tag and a title ending tag for the title of our website which we'll just name it for now for me microwave sam's website now for connecting bootstrap css file we'll do caret link href equals quote css slash bootstrap dot min dot css quote the min.css compared to bootstrap.css is just the difference between bootstrap.css has some comments. So if you want to customize the bootstrap.css, you kind of know what is what. But we won't be really customizing bootstrap.css in this tutorial. So we'll just use bootstrap.min.css. And the way I formatted it is we had CSS slash bootstrap.min.css because bootstrap.min.css is inside our CSS folder so the way it works is CSS folder and then you just slash the file name then you can end it off with rel equals quote style sheet I accidentally wrote href equals style sheet here but it's supposed to be rel for relationship basically and since our CSS uh, file is a style sheet. You do rel equals quote style sheet quote, and you can end it with a caret. So, secondly, we want to connect it with a font. So we'll do the same link href equals a link for a font, which is from the fonts google apis dot com slash css quote from the family equals open plus sans an example with the size four hundred and 600 quote rel equals style sheet for another relationship because a font is still basically a style sheet provided by Google and I'll show you how to uh, choose your own font if you don't like open sans but we chose open sans because it's easy to use and it's easy to see so we'll go to fonts Google APIS and we'll Google search this on this developers.google.com slash fonts you kind of see an example of how to use this if you kind of didn't understand how the fonts work basically the fonts just another CSS file provided by Google now developer API is for our more experienced um, 
viewers here who want to see more examples. But we'll go Google search list of Google fonts. I'll leave this link in the description. It's google.com slash fonts. And over here you can see the fonts provided by Google font families. And you can preview the text and how it looks like. So as an example, I'll just search Open Sans again. You can see that we chose Open Sans just because it's easy to see, frankly. And you can read it easily. So how you use it is you add it to collection and then you just click use at the bottom right. Um, over here you can see that you can select different sizes, normal 400, semi, bold 600 which I'll select. And you can see that on the right side it has page load, how intensive it will be on your website. Uh, Google provides a code and then you can just copy this and then paste it to your index.html file. So you copy this and then you just paste it over what we just wrote down for the fonts. I had committed this to memory so that's why I wrote it in the beginning but I decided to just show you how to select your own font. So after you paste that, finally we want to create another CSS file. Uh, and this CSS file would be basically Bootstrap provides uh, easy hints or not hints but um, directions to kind of make navigation bars like layouts of the index.html but we also need a new file and we'll save as um, in the CSS folder called style.css because maybe you want to customize the coloring or customize specific layouts that bootstrap already provided and we'll do this in the style.css file which we just created and we can link it up with our HTML file by writing caret link space href equals quote CSS slash style dot CSS quote rel equals quote style sheet quote ending caret now we'll have our three basic CSS for bootstrap font and our style for our individual like h index and then we'll top it off with a body tag with a caret body caret and close it off with a caret slash body caret. Now we'll just test off uh, this index.html to make sure that you can actually see what's happening by writing hello world. Just save uh, the index.html file and we'll open it, it up in our browser. First thing that I tried to do was open the browser but it didn't seem to respond. So what you can do is you can just go to the folder that you saved your index.html which should be in bootstrap project. From there you can open up the index.html in your Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox just go to the folder and then basically just find it first I'll go to bootstrap project and then I'll right click and open bootstrap project in Google Chrome you can see our basic HTML page of the file with hello world so some things I might have missed is that anytime you have it opened up if you change the index.html and refresh the page on your browser, then the changes are changed. And one thing that I forgot to mention, if you didn't understand this before, but the body tag contains basically the main content of your site. Whatever appears on the site itself as for content is within the body section of the page. So I think I've gotten through most of the stuff. 